to some succulent growers. I'm Lynn and welcome to Desert Plants of Avalon in the north of Ireland. And in today's video, I'm in the polytunnel and I'm, this is a special video request by a wonderful subscriber called Barbie. So hi Barbie. Barbie. Barbie wanted to know if I could do a special video about my Euphorbia harida succulent plant and also how I care for it. So first of all guys, if you want to know what the hell is a Euphorbia harida, this is my Euphorbia harida succulent plant here that I have in the polytunnel and it is an awesome, awesome Euphorbia. And despite its name, Horida, it is anything but horrid. <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit about why it got its name as well. And uh, first of all, Barbie, thank you for the video request. And sorry for taking so long to get this video done. So first of all, here is the awesome wacky Euphorbia here. And uh, tons and tons and tons of uh, clumps of uh, props, if you can call them that, all growing at the base here. So then... A little bit about my Euphorbia Harida. Now, this Euphorbia is one that I got back in 2007. So I've had this for around 17 years now. And I got it from a garden, from a little florist centre, a little garden shop in, a, in here in Ireland, in the west coast of Ireland, in a town called Manalhamerton in County Leitrim. And uh, when I first got it, it was literally just one little one little head like this here very small and then over the 17 years it's got bigger and bigger and bigger and formed many 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 clumps so I don't know which was the original head may have been this one here because this is the largest one and it's sort of popped out over the years and I've sort of potted it on awesome awesome euphorbia and it's a euphorbia as all the euphorbias are from um, South Africa and this particular euphorbia harida is often known as the African milk barrel obviously because of its shape and the milk barrel because euphorbias contain contain a milky sap that when they're cut or damaged they give off a little white milky sap to show an example there this is actually dried up but it gives this white sort of liquidy sap so you have to protect your hands if you're handling euphorbias or you're taking cuttings from them and it's very cactus looky like now a lot of the the um, succulent euphorbias are very much alike cactus in their appearance i mean a lot of people think wrongly and understandably at the same time that this is actually a cactus by its appearance but the difference between euphorbias and cacti is that euphorbias don't have areoles and if you're sort of new to cacti succulents and you're thinking what is an areole <laughs> well an areole is where the spines come out of their little cushions here on cacti as you can see here and this is an example of a cactus that doesn't have spines but it does have areoles and areoles here is where the flowers emerge from and also where when they have spines such as this gorgeous ferrocactus here where the spines come out of and with euphorbias they look like they may have spines but they actually have thorns they they don't have areoles where where flowers come out of and there it is quite different so that's the difference between them and usually as well the majority of euphorbias succulent euphorbias are not as cold hardy as cacti would be but i do treat during the spring and summer i do treat my euphorbias pretty much like i treat a lot of my desert cacti now the word horida actually means uh, lots of prickles, uh, lots of prickles in Latin. And this particular euphorbia produces gorgeous little tiny yellowy sort of golden blooms in the, in the summertime, sort of from mid to late summer, sometimes into the early fall, autumn time. And I'll just show you a little screenshot here of this particular euphorbia, Horida, when it's been blooming in the summertime. As you can see, tiny little blooms. And I have made a, a video on this euphorbia when it is in flower. So if you want to see what these awesome euphorbias look like when they're in flower, do go ahead and watch that video. And I'll link that video up above. Watch it after this one. So then, how do I care for this gorgeous euphorbia? Well, then it loves a bright sunny spot. So a plenty of sunshine. I have this here in my polytunnel where it gets plenty of sunshine um, during the spring and summer months. 
and um, it loves a well draining soil so I use the same type of soil that I'd use for the majority of my cacti and succulents and that will be um, a well draining soil of three equal parts of loam um, horticultural grit and horticultural sharp sand. If I don't have sand then I'll I'll use pumice or I'll use perlite but roughly the same I, my mix I love to use three equal parts of loam, sand and grit. So a well draining soil is a must for these Euphorbia haridas and then I water them from sort of the middle of April up until early September. Now with a lot of my Euphorbias this one is no exception I find they tend to go on um, growing and even flowering much later in the season than a lot of my desert type of uh, cacti or succulents do. But despite that, this particular euphorbia, I stopped watering it in the beginning of September. And the reason for that, is, as I mentioned, it's the only one I do leave out in the polytunnel. And I heat my polytunnel at a minimum of 5 Celsius, 41 degree Fahrenheit, which this seems to be okay for this particular euphorbia but bear in mind if you have other types of euphorbias or you are new to this euphorbia be on the safe side and overwinter it at 10 celsius which is about 50 degree fahrenheit i know this euphorbia and it's sort of used to my conditions and i do keep it very dry over the winter which is why it seems to do okay for me the only euphorbia i find in my experience that i can overwinter cool and dry at a minimum of 5c and uh, so of the watering, yeah, I do give this a little bit of fertilizer during the spring and summer. I would fertilize probably every three to four, every, every third to fourth watering, I'll give this Euphorbia heredia, heredia. I put a wee bit of tomato feed into the water. And uh, this, in my experience, would encourage more of these gorgeous little yellow blooms in sort of the middle to late summer to early fall. And that's because tomato feed is high in potassium, so it encourages more blooming and it seems to really help help this gorgeous euphorbia. Repotting, I'd repot this on every three to four years. As you can see, it is very much overhanging the pot there, so I'm going to more than likely have to repot this one this spring and summer because it's, it's difficult when it comes to watering because I can't really get close to it to water. As you can see, it's really tight to the pot and I usually have to have a long handled hose lock uh, watering can that I have to aim right into close to the base and give it a good water in that way but it's it's going to need a repot this year and of course when I do I shall film a special video when I do so that's how I care for mine plenty of sunshine a well draining cactus soil I keep totally dry over the the winter from early September up until middle of April fertilize once every three to four waterings with a, a half strength tomato feed and um, I make sure that it's sort of uh, kept in a very sunny position as well here so that's easy and propagation will be from cuttings will be the easy way and because this particular euphorbia produces lots of these offsets pups if you like to call them here probably the best thing to do is to take it from the pot or cut a pup off very close to the base but when you're handling euphorbia because they do give off that milky sap you do have to be very careful when taking cuttings of euphorbia so make sure that you're wearing gloves and even protect your eyes because the milky sap can be very irritating to the skin and there's some stories where you can even you know get very sore eyes or even go blind I don't know how true that is personally myself I'm lucky I don't seem to have a problem with handling the sap but just bear that in mind if you're not used to handling euphorbias as I say they give off this little milk whitey sap so that's a little bit about this and the history 17 years old I'm quite proud of this in my collection and I think it looks lovely on this table with my even though it's not a cactus with my other type of cacti that are sort of bowel shaped as you can as you can call them and uh, very very beautiful euphorbia and very easy euphorbia to grow so thank you barbie for the video request and do you have this euphorbia in your collection guys let me know in the comments down below so i hope you enjoy this little video about my euphorbia harida and uh, for lots more tips and tricks on how to grow many different types of cacti so then please do subscribe and 
do remember to click that notification bell and for lots of photos of all the cacti and succulents especially now it's coming up to the blooming budding season then do please follow me on instagram twitter and facebook at desert plants of avalon and check out my website for lots of growing tips on there as well as regular blogs and what's happening to the plants and also what i'm getting up to desert plants of avalon Dot com. I want to wish you all a fantastic cactus and succulent power day and a little goodbye from all the seagulls outside. Quack, quack.